about this. It started with this question, uh, disciples, disciple asking this question to Jesus, right? Uh, in chapter 24, verses 1, uh, 1 to 3, I'm going to read that and uh, you will be able to read that on the screen on your screen and if you have bible you can open up with me so the all this conversation about the end time started with this question uh this question brought by disciples so i'm going to read that question <clears throat> um, passage here jesus left the temple and was walking away when disciples came up to him to call his attention to, to its building do you see all these things he asked truly i tell you not one stone here will be left on another everyone will be thrown down as jesus was sitting on the mount of olives the disciples came to him privately tell us they said when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age so disciples asks uh jesus like you know he when like he the disciples came to him and said like you know this be uh looking at the overlooking or uh, toward the the temple of jerusalem uh, they wanted Jesus to see this beautiful, beautiful temple, and uh, and and really the the temple was really beautiful, right? So what we know about the temple, what we know about the history of the of that temple at that time, if you read in Ezra, Ezra chapter six, uh, uh, you will see that this temple was originally built by Jerubbabel and an Ezra. I mean, like when they came, like the the waves of people, they came out of Babylon and they began to build the temple. So. Ezra and, and Jer Jerubbabel, they build the temple. And uh, in the time of uh, Jesus's, like in, in Jesus's time alone, like when Herod, the king, the great king uh, was there, he expanded it, he improved it so greatly that, that it was really, really beautiful. But then what happens after like, you know, when Jesus uh, pro uh, says this prophecy, like he prophesies about the temple, like 40 years later, uh, Roman soldiers came and they completely destroyed the temple in AD four, uh, in AD seventy, right? So they came and they destroyed the, uh, the the city of Jerusalem, and including the temple and everything. I mean, they burned it down. They completely uh, leveled it uh, leveled it on the, on the ground. So that's where the the destructions of the temple happens in AD seventy. Um, you know, and there is this another verse like uh, which talks about in Matthew twenty four uh, verse four to eight, I'm gonna read that again. Uh, Watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are, are the beginning of birth, of birth pain, uh, pains. Um, we're gonna we're gonna read another one, uh, another uh, passage as well, chapter twenty-four, verses nine to fourteen. Um, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith, and you will and will betray, uh, betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then end will come. You know, um, <clears throat> so why I'm reading these passages is because, um, you know, this, Jesus describes uh, like what happens in between the time of his ascension from the time like when he ascended to the heavens and then when he will come back again when he will return back again to uh in his second coming to to collect us right so what will happen so he describes the nature that he describes the time in between the end times right so 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 when you were when we were all reading those passages what we were finding was that his disciples like he talks about what disciples must uh face or or, or you know what they what they could expect during this time so we saw that Jesus talked about like disciples will go through uh, persecutions, right? So disciples will face persecutions. Uh, the second one that we also saw that uh, these guys or people, the believers will betray one another. And the persecutions will be so great that it will also reveal the, uh, the, the, the traitors, you know, like uh, within the church or who were, uh, who are those people who truly believes or who 
uh, really truly says what 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 they truly are uh, the believers true believers out of the uh, the non-believers right so uh, there is a quote from Spurgeon who says that persecution would reveal the traitors within the church as well as the enemies without the third is that you know the, there will be false false prophet will rise and deceive many so we saw that in between the time uh, of the of the second coming of Jesus Christ we, we see a lot of the false prophets coming in and and, uh, and prophecies will be done uh, one of the examples the great example would be uh, to you know I was also looking at this one uh, William Miller's uh, William Miller's uh, Miller's uh, uh, story like when he William Miller's in 1844 when he prophesied about Jesus second coming will happen on uh, like 1844 and then people they rallied and they produced um, uh, you know a lot of like a uh, lot of uh, things and they were actually getting ready for for second coming of Jesus and but then when 22 sec uh, you know like when the 1844 the time uh, when it came and people were waiting for it but then when the, uh, the the second coming didn't happen and people were disappointed by it so greatly disappointed by it and uh, many people they fall uh, fall away fell away from their faith as well so the fourth is the lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold right so this is something that we need to look at it and i'll come back to it again uh, at the uh, toward the end so so lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold the fourth one the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come you know <clears throat> regardless like all these uh, natural degradations or false prophets or or, or, or wars or famines all of these things are bound to happen but none of these things are uh, you know are you know like the ultimate sign for the end of Jesus coming but these are when we look at it collectively they are in itself as a sign for Jesus coming uh, and, and what we can also say is, is that these things will uh, has to happen even more intensely like this will even more grow intensely uh, as the time uh, of Jesus second coming approaches right but then the, when the when 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 will the end come you know we, we 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 also saw that the gospel will be preached to all nations and then the end will come none of these things none of the wars none of the famines none of all of these things can really prevent the the task or the preaching of the gospel it has to go hand in hand and and uh, and, and and seeing this you know how you know we can we can say that how crucial it is for us as a church to do God's work it's to to preach the gospel and to be the gospel in the world right so this is really something that we need to look at uh, so what happens in between uh, the second coming from the ascensions of Jesus Christ uh, to the time of like when he comes again returns back again uh, into the world there is another sign that uh, that Matthew talks about is is that the sign of abomination uh, of desolation spoken by Daniel Primarily, this passage comes from Daniel, but basically what this passage is talking about is that, you know, there will be a time like when, uh, you know, like um, 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 a person like will, 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 will set up an image of himself or, or, or herself and, and, and uh, he or she will cause people to worship it, worship, worship that image or something like that. In the in the history of like uh, in the in the biblical history, we have seen like there is this event which has happened uh, in in one six eight uh, one six eight B C, where this person like Antiochus IV Epiphanes has done the same thing like he had erected a pagan altar to Jews right to in worship of Jews in the temple of Jerusalem, and then and then now uh, when we uh, when we look at the event of uh, Ro uh, the Roman soldier destroying the Jerusalem temple in AD 70, uh, what people, how people, um, sometimes people can easily uh, interpret or, or say that, okay, the end times, uh, the, all these prophecies has been fulfilled and uh, in all these events, right, through this event. So they kind of like, we kind of like try to define easily that these things has already happened. But then the scholars, they, they say that they disagree with this thing, with this theory. And then they say that uh, the, the ultimate, uh, you know, the, the coming of Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus coming has not, hasn't, has, hasn't happened. And then these events are actually uh, the events that is foreshadowing or foreshadowing the, the ultimate fulfillment of, of Christ's second coming. It is yet to happen. But these were some of the like the like a reflections of what is what is to come uh, in the future. So 
it's still then really like you know if like the the christ uh, all these events if it is foreshadowing then then it's really that, that we are in time that where uh, we're actually waiting and watching and 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 and, and and getting ourselves ready for that day and that's that's where it makes sense when jesus says um in uh in matthew 24 what he says in matthew 24 36 he says that but about that day or hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father so that's where you know this word makes sense that he, jesus is, is talking about in light of what is coming what is coming in the future he he's saying something to his disciples and not only, only to, to his disciples at his time in his time but then he's saying he's saying to us that we need to be watched and be ready and today we can actually we can theme this title this sermon as you know like watch as saying like watch and be ready like god wants us to be to be watchful and be ready for that day in preparation in preparation for that day of his second coming right because because and then like when you when you look at the 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 story of uh 10 versions in the uh in matthew the same chapter um uh matthew 24 sorry 24 24 14 to 30 you will see that uh there are like there is there is this parable of 10 virgins just waiting uh with the lamp in their hands waiting for for their bridegroom to come and take them in right so only the five virgins could make it because then the other the the other the rest then they did not have enough oil so they did not they could not go uh with the bridegroom so even that parable shows that that jesus is asking or god is asking us to be watchful and be ready for that day now i'm going to read two passages first uh from timothy second timothy uh chapter three verses one to five and the second is uh from john first john three to sixteen and while I'm reading this passage, um, while I'm reading this passage, you can see that it is something that talks about the what happens during this time of us waiting for uh, for the time for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy three one to five. But mark this: there will be terrible times terrible times in last days people will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boastful proud abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy without love unforgiving slanderous without self-control brutal not lovers of the good treacherous rash conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people this is very like it's filled with a lot of this this negativity right with a lot of this this should not have happened things right so when we look at it this you know when we look at these things sometimes when we look at the world we get frustrated and we we say like you know what where, where, what in the world like where, where this is going but then you know we 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 know that 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 god and and God has already revealed to us what is to come and, and what's going to happen as we approach the time, right? The time of Jesus' second coming. These things are, are happening and these things are bound to happen. And, and uh, these things will only be, be able to like uh, remind us that, that, that the time of Christ is coming near to us. And then in John, uh, 1 John 3.16, if we read that verse, it really talks about the task that God has asked us to has asked us to do. I mean, like while we watch and be ready, what kind of task that he, is, he has asked us to, to render to do, right? So one, uh, 316, I'm going to read this one uh, for all of us. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives uh, for our brothers and sisters and uh, if I can just uh, view all of us uh, I can if I can see all of us in the screen that would be great grace um, let us pull up, pull us uh, pull us back so Jesus talked about what happens 
during the time of his, between the time of his ascension uh, until his second coming, right? We saw that these things will happen. And, 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 and then surely he then he asks his disciples and he asks us to be watchful and be ready uh, for that day. Now, my question is, is that, you know, how he wants us to be watchful and be ready. And the question is that how we are being watchful and be and, and readying ourselves or getting ready for that day. Maybe ask these questions to yourself right now. Like, how are we being watchful for that day? If Jesus comes right now, right? If he comes right now, if he reveals his second coming right now, then how are we being being watchful for that day? Like, how are we are we ready for that day? You know? Are we ready for that day? And in chapter 24, 25 alone, there it reveals like how we can be watchful and be ready for that day. Right? How we can be watchful and ready for that day. The first thing that I wanted to bring out is by talking again uh, the parable from the parable of like 10 versions, right? What we learn from that parable is just that, what we learn from the parable is just that Jesus asked us to be, to be vigilant, to be alert, you know, watching, you know, waiting for him. It also talks about the drowsy and laziness, right? And several times Matthew talks about drowsy and laziness. I think Christ calls us to be, to be, you know, to be the Christian that is alive and that is organic and that is listening, constantly listening to the voice of Jesus Christ. And really like, really like being alert, being ready to receive him when he appears to us. And the oil really talks about the life of prayer. The oil really talks about the life of prayer. And uh, when we have actually been living a life of prayer, that life of prayer actually connects us with our Heavenly Father, with God, with Jesus Christ. And it really allows us to listen to the Holy Spirit, what He is trying to do right now at this time, in between this time from, like, you know, from His ascension to His second coming. So, it is really important for us to be alert and and then really not grow cold in our love for God and in love for each other. You know that was something that that was uh, I mean like uh, it was alarming for me that I was I was asking myself this question: like, Am I going? Am I growing cold in my love for God? Am I am I growing cold in my love for others as well? You know, there are a lot of things that are bound to happen or happens in our in our in our own lives in our personal lives. Uh, with our works and, and with our with our challenges, with the, with the pandemic, with all of the things, words and and famines, and with the daily challenges, and with all the you know the these difficulties here in Hong Kong, especially as a family, I face a lot of the difficulties. We are now going through this question of like how uh, you know should we educate our, our 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 kids? I mean, like the all this education system is just like being suffered, and 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 just is poor. You know, it's just like pulled apart like it's everywhere we cannot like we would not know what to do next and in all this disarray in all this confusions like you know we are easily uh it's very tempting to to be deluded to be confused and to be frustrated and and just to lose hope and to grow cold in our love for god and love for one another and the first thing it really reminds us to be ready with the oil right extra oil it talks about extra oil that we are living our lives Christian lives and in the, our lives and our faith is fully grounded. Actually, they say like we are bathed, we are bathing in our prayers. And I really want to encourage our brothers and sisters as we're waiting for that day, may we spend more time in, our, in, in prayers. May we spend more time in kneeling and praying and asking God for to show and reveal his will in our lives. The second element, the second how we watch and be ready is just that use God-given talents or gifts to serve him and to serve others. Matthew 25, 14, 30, there is a, there's this uh, parable of um, the king giving talents to, uh, to, the three, uh, to three people. First, uh, he gives five bags of uh, golds, and the second, uh, two bags of gold, and the, the last one, one bag of golds. And all of them, uh, except one, uh, the third one, uh, did not multiply, did not invest his, his gold, and uh, he just like, uh, he just hides his gold. And then uh, to that, uh, the king he gets really mad and he says like you know why did you what did you not make you know what did you not make use of my uh, my 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 gold or my uh, my money 
So then he was thrown into the internal punishment, right? So that's the parable there. But what this parable is telling us is just that is, is just that is that really during this time of as we as we wait and watch and be ready uh, for our uh, ourselves to that day, uh, God wants us to use His gift and and and, and talents to to really serve Him and and uh, and and really to know that these gifts, however like small or big, it comes from God. To recognize that the source of gift, whatever we have in our lives. Is not ours. We don't own it. We are, we are just the manager. Like he, he we are the, we are the steward that God has put us into, and uh, and 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 then at the end, God, he he wants us to be accountable for what he has given to us, and and not in that account, he wants us to not just like uh, multiply, but to bless others, right? So, I I really like you know I really want us to think about what gifts and what talents that God has given to you, and the question is that have you been able to recognize the source of your gift as God as being the source of, of, of your gift and I, and then have you been able to be be able to multiply that gift in your life and uh, and 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 then you are you using that to serve others are you using that for the ministry of the Lord so there is this question like you need to, we need to ask constantly as a church as well God has given us the ministry uh, and then in that ministry that God wants us to use the gift and talents that he has given to us the third one really like connects with the it goes with the second one is is that god wants us to be involved in the ministry he really wants us to engage the culture with the gospel many people they uh they they criticize or they uh they they, they contrast with the uh with the with the doctrine or the life like you know which they say that we should be more like grounded in words and in 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 prayers and in, so they they focus inward like for the inward growth and in, inward development uh christian uh, maturity right and then the other parties like they they might or they may uh they may say that oh okay you know like it is not enough just to be in the church uh we ought to be there in the culture engaging culture in the marketplace and, and doing this and that and gospel and all of that and that is that is true christianity and then all of that so sometimes we see like these two parties are like you know criticizing each other or or just thinking like you know um uh, this 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 is the this is the way of of, of to be the church right now at the, uh, in the current world and then the other party is saying oh this is the way you know God actually, you, when you see, uh, when you look at uh, the Acts, uh, when you look at the people, the, the apostles in, in in Acts, and how did they live their Christian life? They lived, um, they lived the gospel by by practicing this these two uh, these two elements. Like they they were they were like uh, they were they were uh, they were reading God's word. Uh, they were fellowshipping together uh, inside in their in in their houses in their um, uh, in the synagogues. And they were also present uh, on the street as well. They were also out there meeting people in the marketplace, and they were proclaiming the gospel. They were feeding the the, the hunger, and then the, they were meeting the needs of the people. And then, really, this third um, the third tire, this third element, uh, now again reminds us of our ministry as a church, as an individual, as Christians. What we ought to be doing as we watch and as we watch and. And then, and then make ourselves ready for that day. You know, uh, there is this story at the toward the end of chapter 25, uh, 31 to 46. Uh, it talks about the goat and the sheep, right? The goat being the unrighteous people and then the sheep being the righteous people. The clear distinctions between these two, uh, two groups. The righteous ones, the sheep, uh, who actually uh, carries out, who does the, the ministry of, of, of Jesus by you know, by by you know, I think there are like the couple of things that Jesus mentions. Uh, mentions uh, they were feeding, like they 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 feeds the hunger, like they um, they they feed the hunger, and then they 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 give drinks to the thirsty. Uh, they invite people in, and then they um, they they visit uh, the prisoners in the prison place. Um, they and then they also uh, clothe the naked ones. Um, you can see this this like this ministry is being done by the by these righteous people. And, and, and I was really thinking about like, what would that mean for us as a church? What would that mean for us in the, um, in the, now the, in the current context, what would that mean for us to, to feed the hungry? I mean, like be, before we interpret this into our own context, let's just like, maybe like, let's just take this message literally, like, you know, maybe God is asking us to be committed uh, to, to loving each other, be committed to loving, uh, to loving each other no matter what serve one another and be committed in serving right maybe god is calling you to feed the hungry the thirsty 
maybe he is calling you to go beyond your comfort zone to visit someone in the prison because you know going into the prison is not is not nice it's not it's not easy we, we were visiting one one of our brother in the prison here in hong kong and it's a lot of the procedures that you have to go through but we were visiting this person in the prison who had become a uh, christian right so it is something very different to be in those places like where we usually don't go where we usually don't find ourselves as christians maybe god is asking you to provide clothes for the naked what does that mean right what does that mean maybe it means like literally providing clothes for the for the naked people right people those who do not have enough in their lives um, but then maybe maybe it means that 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 you know the, the oftentimes the clothes covers our shame many times brothers and as as being the brothers and sisters uh, you know, he, God wants us to protect our brothers and sisters, those who are, uh, those who are living a life that is not, that is not godly, you know, instead of shaming them, instead of criticizing them, or instead of readily, like, uh, you know, judging them, God wants us to protect them and come around them and, 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 and love them and, and, and nurture them and, and not to shame them. Maybe he wants us to, he wants us to clothe them, uh, with love and, and protection so that they will feel protected and, and they will feel loved you know, in our fellowship, in our relationship, right? Maybe that's what, what, what God is asking you to do. And maybe it is time to, to be there uh, in the marketplace, in our culture, and make known God through our lifestyle. You know, all of this, like very intentional living is really like, for me, it's just like sowing to you. And for us, it's what it is sowing, what it is telling us is that is asking us to live an, an incarnational life that the life that Jesus lived on earth. He would be going uh, to, to, his, to his own death and he would be sacrificing his own life for the remission of our sins. He lived a life that was incarnational. And I believe that, you know, what does that mean for us to watch and be ready? You know, it means, it means that we live a life of incarnation. He wants us to be out there and he wants us to be there present in the lives of people. And it is very tempting sometimes we forget that, you know, we have this comfort zone and it becomes difficult for us to go beyond that comfort zone of our, of our, of our own lives or, or our fellowship or whatever we do things in our circle, right? But sometimes God challenges us like, will you, be, will, you, will you not delay and will you just cross that boundary and then, and then meet someone uh, who, 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 who needs these things, who is needy, who, who are these least brothers and sisters? And one of the beautiful things that what it says in this passage is that when you do these things for the list of my brothers or sisters, you did it to me. I, he puts, he puts this, I, you know, like the, the pronoun uh, in place of like them, right? And it really shows that what, whatever we are doing as a church, whatever you are, you are doing as a ministry to your brothers and sisters, it is not something that we do for ourselves or for someone, right? Or even for the sake of activity or the organizations, but we are doing it for Christ. We're doing it for him and he's counting it, it every day and there is a reward for it. He talks about the reward for that and you will, he will be rewarded for it. So we are actually working for Christ and we need to be reminded this sometime and we forget the focus of our ministry is sometime becomes something else, right? But we need to be reminded that we do all these things for who? For Christ. And we are preparing ourselves and we're being watchful as we are doing these things, as we're carrying it out, carrying it out these things. Now, I really want to ask these questions, you know, these three questions uh, in this message, and I'm gonna wrap up this, question, uh, this, this message. While we wait for the day, the time of Christ's coming, second coming, oftentimes we think about, like we ask God to, you know, like when will this end, right? Or when will you answer my prayers? So we will look linearly from A to Z, but I think in between, God often asks us to look into the, the question of how, right? How, the signs, the wonders, the things. And God, is, God has been maybe revealing those, those signs and wonders, those things that, that indicates that he is near to you, that he is saying something to you. And would you respond to those signs? Would you respond to God and, 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 and connect with God and, and, and have relationship with God and say, Lord, maybe this is something that you are saying to me. Maybe this is, your, this is something that you're teaching, teaching me during this time. This is interim time, right? And I wanna be engaged with you. 
I want to know what it, what it is that you were saying to me, God. Rather than really thinking about like the, the end goal. Maybe God wants you to look at right now what is happening in your life. And, uh, and rather than thinking about like, oh, no, God is not answered. God is delaying. God is like really like, you know, he's not listening to my prayer. Just look at what you have right now and what God has given to you. And would you engage with God right now and ask this question, this crucial question, God, what you are saying to me? And, and engage in this question of how God, how he's doing this, this process. God is revealing something through this process in your life. And the second question that I want us to ask is, is that, you know, in uh, like what gifts that God has given to you? What talents that God has given to you? And have you been, been able to recognize those talents? And those talents are from, from God. And, and are you using those talents for, for God's ministry? Are you using those talents for God's ministry? And, uh, and the third question really is very similar to second one, but it actually is, is, uh, is a specific question like, and in what ways, in which ministry, are we in which, in, in what ways, are we, in which area, like where you want God, where you want God to use you, right? And how God wants you to be used. And would you respond to God? And would you ask in your prayers and say, God, just, just use me, God, in this area. And would you be able to, to come before God with these prayers and, and then specify, maybe like from now on to Easter to like the, toward the end of, the, uh, end of this year, like you will have asked, okay, maybe God is asking me to do this. Maybe he's asking me to be, to be involved in the young adult ministry, right? That is happening in the church. Maybe God is asking me to be, to be involved with the children ministry. Maybe God is asking me to be just to be there present in the church, encouraging people, praying for people. So, so identify your gifts and, uh, and ask God or, or ask, you know, like people around you and, and identify the ministries or the areas where God wants you to be present and be incar incarnational in your in your living and that's how we preach the gospel that's how we live out the gospel in our lives i'm gonna i'm gonna close here right now so let us just um let us just you know like uh, uh divide into the groups right now go into your groups small groups uh, like two or three and pray for each other uh, and uh, sometimes you it's very difficult for us to identify our gifts and things like that or sometimes it is so confusing for us when we talk about these end times and things like that. If you have any prayers, if you have any concerns, if you have any questions, can you ask those questions to your group, uh, discuss those questions in your group and pray for each other, okay? So really to pray for each other right now and then encourage one another uh, to, to grow in the love of Christ for one another. So thank you so much. Uh, let us just divide into the groups and get into the groups and uh, pray for each other and encourage one another. Or maybe we can first spend a few minutes um, reflecting on ourselves or um, if you wish to journal and to write down something, feel free to do so as we are waiting for the Nepali translations to finish, then we will break everyone into smaller groups of um, two to three and we'll have some time of um, sharing and praying for each other. Yeah, and let's come back at uh, 1230 for the blessings.
Me, Adarsh, would you like to kindly give us some background um, worship or lead us into um, worship in a song? So, like, we can kindly have a time. All right. So, um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Finished. Translations has just finished. So, now we'll break into groups of two and three. And um, yeah, so. Um, we'll be discussing the questions in the group and hopefully we'll have time to pray for each other and we'll be coming back at 12.30. Thank you guys. <laughs>